Hey folks, I'm Brown Bear. In my analysis of the Age of Empires 4 reveal trailer, I talked about the importance of correctly balancing cognitive load. I wanted to make a quick video explaining what I mean because I think it's an important dimension to building a good competitive RTS. If you don't know me, I'm a former top competitive player in both Age of Titans and Age of Empires 3, playing under the handle Parfait. Alrighty, let's get started. When I say cognitive load, I'm referring to the amount of mental stress put on a player at any given moment in the game. A good way to think about this is to see how certain gameplay mechanics slot into the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. Over a span of, say, three minutes, what does the player do, and how do those actions connect to one another? In today's video, I'd like to talk about unit queuing as an illustration of cognitive load. Every age game requires you to make decisions about unit production. The classic approach present in Age of Empires 1, Age of Empires 2, and Age of Mythology calls for the player to queue units one at a time, very similar to other RTS games. This design requires the player to periodically revisit their production and queue additional units to spend their resources efficiently. Age of Empires 3 revamped this mechanic by introducing stacked queuing. Instead of queuing one unit at a time, players can queue up to five at once. This means you can start building a unit, wait until it's almost done, then queue four additional units, and all five of them will come out at the same time. In theory, this ought to be a nice quality of life feature because production is mechanically less burdensome. But I don't like how it interacts with the game's pacing. One issue is the predictability of your macro management. Because units come out over longer periods of time, it's not obvious how many units you'll produce in your current macro cycle. You basically queue as soon as you can, then later decide how much you actually want to commit. This is particularly burdensome for your opponent because it's difficult for them to scout your level of commitment to any given army composition. There's a really significant difference between queuing 5 falconets and 1 falconet. If you guess incorrectly and under or overproduce calverins, you set yourself back pretty substantially. More broadly, stacked queuing also pushed players to commit harder to dedicated unit comps because it made it prohibitively time-consuming to mix and match. In a more classic scheme, units flow out more frequently in smaller batches, so it feels easier to reason about. It is true that it requires more attention from the player, but this doesn't necessarily translate into more cognitive load. I'll use an example from Age of Mythology here. A common Odin build at the top competitive level was to multi-prong harass with mass raiders while tacking to the Third Age as a follow-up. Because this involved multiple barracks, Odin players would need to switch back and forth for managing their armies, economy, and production. It sounds hard, but it really wasn't too bad, because the production mechanics slotted into the game's pacing. Players moved from one task to another in a very natural way. Once you became accustomed to the rhythm of competitive Age of Mythology, you were largely able to discard thinking too much about production, creating space to think about more interesting decisions like army movement and tech choices. By contrast, stacked production incentivizes a disjoint production scheme, in which you want to queue your first unit as soon as possible, spend your resources on other things as much as you can, and then finally queue the remaining four units as late as possible. This setup doesn't feature a cyclical structure that makes it easy to move from action to action. This interrupts the rhythm of the game and imposes more stress on players to keep track of the timings of their production. I would argue that one of the key design differences between Age of Empires 2 and its successors was a diminishing focus on moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, deliberately exchanged for more quality-of-life features. While Age 2 was certainly a more mechanical game, its pacing was smoother and more incremental. It felt really easy to build a nice economy because it was only a matter of sprawling outward and building lots of villagers. Similarly, building a good army or setting up a good defense was mostly a matter of doing a lot of small things correctly, placing walls at the right spots, keeping your units flowing out, and so forth. I guess the best way to describe this is that Age of Empires 2 didn't necessarily have more content than its successors, but it spread that content out in a more reasonable way that was easier to digest for the player. When I look forward to Age 4, I hope they remember the importance of this incremental gameplay. How you structure a game's pacing feeds directly into its cognitive load. It's possible to design two systems with the same result that nonetheless feel very different, 
because the paths you take to get to that result go in completely different directions. Alrighty, that's everything I had for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you subscribed to me here on YouTube and followed me on Twitter and Facebook to receive regular content updates. I mostly do a lot of writing nowadays, so following me on social media is the best way to discover some pretty cool articles. Anyway, the relevant links are in the description below. All the best, and see you next time.